everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2021 Land Rover Discovery. The next hour or so, we're gonna take a look around this very tight three row off-road capable luxury SUV. Talk about uh, what it comes with, all the various packages you can get with a Discovery. Answer all your questions and go out on a drive. After all, this is a live drive, not a live sit. First things first, the Discovery. Now Land Rover has a few different model lineups. They've got the Range Rover lineup, which includes the Range Rover, Range Rover Sport, Range Rover Velar, Range Rover Revoke, very confusing. Then outside of the Range Rovers, you have the Discovery, which we have here. There's also a Discovery, and then there's the Defender lineup, which has the two door and four door, the 90 and the 110. So probably one of the most confusing model lineups for an entire brand, maybe this side, give or take a 911. But the Discovery is kind of a sweet spot. It, it provides a decent amount of kind of general luxury, daily driving type aesthetics, as a lot of people unfortunately use these cars for. <laughs> but it's capable of like Jeep and their Cherokees, most of the very, very capable for off road things. Even most people won't use them for anything much more intense than a Starbucks parking lot. You can see right here, pretty. Cool paint color. I, I think it's wonderful. What do you think, Liz? I mean, I think yeah. it's a pretty car. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. I really like how it handles a lot of the shade really well and looking very dark. And then when you do have some sunlight on it, it just shines. It's a gorgeous, elevated retirement gold made <laughs> to look very cool. And the black accents really help yeah. separate it. I mean, if this was in chrome, it'd look much sillier. It would look silly. Yeah. Yeah. But the black really helps kind of mature it a little bit without going too mature right yeah this is the r dynamic package land rover not only are they confusing with their model lines they're also <laughs> confusing with their trim names so we've got r dynamic s p360 for this car so wow it, i mean it, it's really bad land rover needs to get their <laughs> shit together when it comes to naming their cars and their model lines and everything mm. uh, but the r dynamic that's given us some of these wheels the black wheels with a lot of the black accents we do have an air suspension as well, which we'll demonstrate a little Ooh. bit. Kind of helps with off-roading, a little bit of extra ground clearance. A lot of features for that. But yeah, you said it well, Liz. It's kind of a, the color is a little bit of a balance between gold and beige without looking too strongly of either. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that quite a bit. Now, when you, start, when you start getting to the rear of the discoveries, when you kind of get into some of the jokes, because it's asymmetrical. And when they first designed this generation discovery before this facelift, if you will, which was really a butt lift, it had a horribly asymmetrical rear design and a lot of people joked about it, Jeremy Clarkson included. For this kind of refresh back 2021, they did some efforts to kind of make it a little bit more symmetrical. Oh. But yeah, you see right from the back, <laughs> Alyssa's getting it for the first for the first view. It kind of throws you off. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> they've changed around some accents down here. They've they've softened the license plate area to make the, the ace symmetrical asymmetry asymmetry thank you a little bit less jarring but it is still there i actually don't particularly mind it i think it's kind of quirky it is quirky yeah it makes it stand out but... it's very different it almost looks like my brain is seeing it wrong it's <laughs> a good way to put it yeah i kind of get a similar vibe with our maverick the license plate is also uh, uh not centered in the back of that car so sometimes when you're seeing it from the back you're like oh but it's a, it's more so with this mm, that's true check this out this is kind of neat not only do you have a hitch, you have a big old spot right here to put recovery gear. So if you were stuck, you can oh. literally yank this car out from right there. No covers having to come off, That's no really special nice. tools. You just put some straps on there and away you go. I need to say how much this looks like a Durango. Yeah, it does kind of have that vibe, doesn't yeah. it? With that big C pillar Yeah. right there. Yeah, it yep. looks very much like a Durango to me. Chunky as well. Yep. I'm going to have to get into the car and get my coat. It's so yeah. chilly out. Yeah. Is it nipply? Yep. Cool. All right, well, I'll let you get that real fast and grab your phone. We'll get to some comments here soon. I'll kind of show off some of the rear accents. I shouldn't really say accents, but features, really. Strangely enough, this is actually a three-row vehicle. It's quite a tight three-row. Let's start off by dropping down the air suspension into more of a comfortable loading position. Drops pretty dramatically. It's getting down to the point where it's still a fairly high load surface right below my hips. Probably up at Alyssa's waist, but it is more manageable like this. And then, using these controls, look at that. Rear seats come up. And you have a third row. Really not much cargo space. When you have the third row up, you can see how closely... Oh, 
Oh, I guess they're adjusting themselves a little how close this is to the back. And I mean, you couldn't fit much more than a grocery bag or two right here, but it, it does exist. And for the occasional three row needs, it kind of functions that way. You put these up and bada bing, bada boom. Look at that. How's this for a tight third row? Holy smokes. Everybody say hi to Alyssa. Hi guys. Yeah, not much, not much room for activities here, but you want to see what's nice. Come down, you just hold these buttons <laughs> and they go down and then you actually get a decent bit of room. Jeez. Okay. Okay. That looks a lot better. Yeah. Man. Yeah, and everything's automated, which is really nice. The second row automated as well. That's really nice. So do you, if you want to fold this down, you actually get a really, really usable cargo area. Yeah. That's huge. And a pretty flat load floor as well. Look how nice once this finally gets into position. I mean, you could do, oh, it knows my bag is there, so it's actually coming back up. But, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty usable. Wow. Wanna hop on in? Yeah. Check out the third row? Yeah. Okay. I love Try that. This. I love it when they're automated. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Inside we go. Oh, it was actually this scraper that's in the way here. Oh, was it that? Not this? Yeah, so third row is a little tight to get into. It seems like it could be. Yeah. There's a button here. That's yeah, it's actually up there. So you start with that one, you can recline. These yep. are actually flat buttons. Mm -hmm. With an arrow back and an arrow forward. Which one should I do? Forward. Okay. Yep. Let's see, arrow it forward. Ooh. And then it releases the seat so that you can... Move it? Yep, slide it Holy forward. Holy smokes. I know, it's That's... still tough. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> hey, I did it with a camera on earlier. Watch me struggle, guys. Do you want me to hold your phone? Something. I've got things in my coat pockets that are gonna restrict uh, how much my legs can bend. Gold bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a backup third row. It's not like- It's it, a backup You wouldn't third. buy this car if you were regularly using a third row, but it's just in case. <sighs> and once you're back there, it's actually not too bad as an adult. One button this back. Actually, do you have to hold it? No, oh, it doesn't. Oh, there we go. You slide first and then... Press the button there. Here, I'll come back there as well. Okay. To my side. Oh, I'll scoot over then. Yep, here's your phone. Again, one button there. It's a 60-40 split fold for these seats. Then they I release. I like the buttons. Yeah. And then... It's actually not too bad back here. There's actually a ton of headroom. There is a lot there. of headroom. Yeah. We've got our own sunroof back here shining into our eyes. And <laughs> at 510, I actually have knee room as well. So yeah, and, and pop open this little compartment. A little bit of storage with a USB port. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So if we were going discovering, <laughs> we could do it with actually seven. Oh, is this one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, seven adults. Wow. In this car, which is kind of neat for the size of it. Wow. Yeah, that's that is really cool. Not much luggage, but no, people. zero in fact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not even enough for a picnic basket. Right. Right. So who do we got going on in the chat? We've got Pittsburgh Man and hey, Pittsburgh. Makusa and William Long. Hey guys. Welcome, welcome. William says insert Gary McGovern meme here. I actually don't know who that is. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> um Oh my gosh. Everyone's making Will Smith jokes now. Oh boy. The Pittsburgh man Nathan says if the that. hot spot doesn't work, just Will Smith it. There you go. Smack sup, it. Sup, sup. Actually, you can fold the middle row, so it That's is 40, really 40, 20, 40 split. Yeah. Cool. So Moran says howdy. Hey, Moran. Um, the Pittsburgh man says live sets are fun too, though. Live sets, yeah. What's more confusing, the jet la uh, though, Jag, Land Rover, or Audi nomenclature? Audi's not great either, and we actually also have an Audi this week. It's an A340 with Premium Plus. I'm not a fan of Mazda's... CX... CX... Yeah. X, who does the XC? Volvo. Volvo. I'm not yeah, a fan Alyssa of Alyssa gets XC and CX confused because of Volvo yeah. and Mazda. Yeah. Makes it worse here in, here in Ann Arbor. They have a, a Volvo Mazda dealer, so it really gets bad. And yeah, Mazda's right. making it even worse because they have the CX30 and then the CX5. And then the CX-50, CX and yeah. then the CX-9. They're gonna make a 90. Or an 80 or a 70. Or, oh jeez. I know. Whatever. <laughs> okay. The Pittsburgh man says it looks Nissan-ish. Mm. Yeah, I could actually see that. Yeah. 
Kyle says, hey, I'm here. Oh, hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. How Sorry it's doing? not a V8, but uh, yeah, it's <laughs> inline six action today. Kyle says, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't pre-read that. <laughs> <laughs> he says a girl keeps messaging him. Ah, well, good, good things there. Yeah. Makusa says, uh, says, that's a bad design with all the seats up and barely any cargo space. Yeah, but you gotta understand that's not really the point of this car. It's not like you're you're transporting your five kids and their their car seats and their strollers and diaper bags and everything. It's more for okay, say you're doing an outback excursion and and you you meet up with some people on the trail and you want to transport them as well. Then you kind of make it work. They could put their backpacks on their laps or something. Yeah. Yeah. William says at least that third row isn't as bad as the RXL. Yeah. No, this is definitely not a bad third row. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he also says McGovern was the Land Rover designer who designed them. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Yes, I forgot everyone was... Yeah, because Top Gear did a whole funny thing where they, uh, like, were making fun of his house and, sh like, showed a showed a, a very, like, asymmetric house and then, like, <laughs> and his wife or something and her, her face was all squished to the side. <laughs> you know, the back of the car. Yeah. yeah. Good thing it wasn't Will Smith's wife. Huh. <laughs> Why? Kyle says that Audi and Mazda are very confusing and their nomenclature also. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Now, for some reason, I'm not being freed from here. I don't, I don't understand why. We're trapped. Are you this trapped? Is, this is going to be a life set. Let me, let me unlock the car. Maybe it went to sleep. Oh, Alyssa and I are now stuck. Raft. We got stuck in a land over last time. But oh was, my gosh! <laughs> it was stuck in a, in in a, a hole. In a giant puddle. Yeah, not, uh, not in a third row. God, just darn it. How am I wow. I wonder if the vehicle timed out. So keep that in mind. If you sit and chill in the third row of your of your uh, Land Rover for too long, you will be trapped. Um, I there... can try. We can try to get is through it... this. Yeah. Uh, try not to get dirtiness on the seat. Oh, here. This will make it easier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, that's ridiculous. I'm still not going to be able to get take my shoes off. You can crawl on your knees. There you go. Nice. <sighs> Got easy release boots. Yeah. Unlike these seats. Yeah. <laughs> Need power, power uh, retract for your boots. Click, 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 click. Button okay, feels I nice at least. You. Thank you. Yeah, I assume maybe turning the car on would be the well, way to I, do it. I don't know why I thought it would be easy to. Uh, wait. Right. What about this? Oh, 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 oh! Ah! I'm getting squished. Huh? Yes, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Try the other one. Did you hit both at the same time no, or something? It's just there's only two buttons. Well hit we'll hit the other one that you didn't hit. There. Nope, that's oh that's that side's third row. Gosh man, I am stuck. Yep. We're we're uh we're stuck. Ridiculous. Guess I'm just gonna have to shoot the live drive from back here. There we go. That's what it took. So we had to turn the car back on. It's funny that some of them worked but not all of them. I should put this back up. There we go. Freedom! Wow. Woo! Wow. Uh, all right, we'll do the second row later on. We'll get to some driving. And then I'm going to talk about, talk about the merits of the second row on the Discovery. Land Rover is in this interesting position because much like Porsche in the fact that they build excellent race cars, Land Rover has evolved into a luxury brand, partially because they were such great off-roaders and still are such great off-roaders. And there's this phenomenon that happens where if something, if a car is excellent at something, if a brand is excellent at something, it becomes luxurious. People are willing to pay a premium for it, even though that's not, it that wasn't the original point. Just like the original point of Porsches was not to be luxurious. The point was to be excellent go fast driver's cars and but because they were good at that they became a luxury item and yes the doors are kind of hard to shut yeah it's ridiculous. yeah that's the thing with german cars is lots of things don't work very well this is german I thought I was or sorry english yeah british cars um it's not about uh doing things right it's about making a statement i suppose and this car does make a statement but anyway so it's it's it still is a very very capable off-roader even though it has moved very luxurious because they know people are willing to pay for it what does this do? Changes the height of your armrest. It's a very ineffective way to do it. It's like, you kind of like, see how low it goes now? Oh, it stays like that? Yeah. It's still very ineffective. I know, it's a very silly way to do it. I don't know. I, okay. Yeah. Again, silliness. This car is all full of silliness. 
For example, I cannot for the life of me figure out how to manually adjust the ride height. I figured oh, out no. that if I put it into wade mode for water, for example, then it will go into the upper ride height, but I don't know how to just manually adjust that. So if anyone can help us out, I'd gladly take the help. Anyway. Away we go. <laughs> Try, uh, Kyle remembers when we got stuck in the other Land Rover. Nice. Throwback. Yeah, it was a throwback. Ooh, look, you got do some dirt roads in the old Maverick. Yeah! Nice. I think it looks good with some dirt on the bottom. That's what I said. Yeah. Someone said that. <laughs> Someone, we're not sure who. Look at that. Maverick with its tow hooks and its tonneau cover. Very nice. We should take yeah, that. Yeah, I like that tonneau cover. It looks neat. Yeah, we should take that thing off roading sometime. Okay. All right, anyway, back to the disco. Man says <laughs> attempted murder. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it was attempted. <laughs> Not successful. And the Pitzer man says, so if you have kids, don't buy these. Uh, they will get stuck and crushed. And crushed, yes. And crush. Yeah. William wants to know how the infotainment has been. The infotainment's actually quite good. I'm a fan of Land Rover and Jaguar's new infotainment system. It looks great. It's snappy. It's fairly intuitive. I think it does look really great. I kind of like how it's... It doesn't stick out straight up. It yeah. kind of goes with this flow back here, so you don't really get a lot of sun glare, at least from right. what I've been able to tell in the 30 seconds I've been sitting here. Well, that's what Jaguar Land Rover does super well, is aesthetics. They, they know how to make the car beautiful inside and out, so even if it doesn't function as you want it to, at least you look good. <laughs> Ron says it's interesting. Oh, there's my hot spot. That's probably why we have such trouble with the hot spot. Because I toss it around like it's... Yeah. A balloon. Yeah. And Moran says it's odd that it doesn't come with soft closed doors. Yeah, I found that kind of strange too, but it's probably an option you can pay for. That's fair. This is actually only, what, 77 grand? No, less. What is it? 62. No, bottom. Right there. Oh, 70, 73. 73, okay. So it's, I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but for a luxury three row SUV, it's actually not crazy. Yeah. This one also has almost 10,000 miles on it, which is like 100,000 for a Land Rover compared to <laughs> like a Toyota or something. Not really not really any squeaks or rattles or anything either. Yeah. I am not a big fan of the driving dynamics in Land Rovers. They're chunky, they're not very intuitive. There's the throttle is, um, how, I, how do I best say it? Non-linear and not very smooth. Never, I've never liked Range Rovers. I've, I, I've never even liked the Velar or anything like that. Same goes with Jaguars. Eh, Jaguars are a little bit better, I'll say. But there are cool things about this car. I will say it's got some got some character to it. I gotta give it credit for that. Oh, USB Type C. Mm-hmm. Got Type C and Type A. I like when they have both. That's very interesting. Yeah, you got that that double layer. Yeah center console nice cross stitching it's almost like it's spring mm. spring form of I see. like wanting to close back down oh it's probably just heavy it might just be yeah nice we got a Canadian donation from the pittsburgh man hey thanks pittsburgh thank man thank you he uh. says been a while school's expensive unfortunately <laughs> yeah no, we, we are aware of that right so, yeah yeah but thank you yeah very much appreciate it that'll pay for about a uh, quarter of the gas of this live drive. Appreciate it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which I shouldn't complain much because I'm sure gas is more expensive in Canada than it is here. Yeah. Yes, William says, how does the powertrain feel? Straight six <laughs> does sound pretty nice, but it does it pull well. It's funny that he asked that because I was already kind of getting into that. Cool. I do like inline sixes. This is probably one of my least favorite inline sixes, at least in this car if it's the same one they use in the jaguar models that 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 it works better there in the f pace this is uh it's it's not as powerful as you'd think and i'm not a huge fan of the transmission tuning either but i'll get on it right here I mean, i'm full tilt and the fact that Alyssa's still casually drinking water tells me it's probably not that intense not really it does keep pulling pretty strong 
and it sounds good once it gets real revved out there. I actually kind of appreciate that there's no fake engine noise getting piped in. Yeah. It's just an honest to goodness kind of subdued in line six sound. This does have the mild hybrid as well. So when it's doing start stop or anything, it's a very calm, gentle starter motor sound and sensation. Very smooth. I think it's a good powertrain for this car. I'm just not a big fan of the transmission. Mm. We'll see if I can sort of enunciate that right here. I'm gonna kind of slow down and then lean back into it. And wasn't bad. Sometimes it feels like it feels like come on, come on, get going. Like this, this, it's not telepathic. It's not doing exactly what you think it should be. The Pittsburgh man says gas is insanely expensive and he started walking the five minutes to the store instead of driving. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. I, I wish that. we could do that. <laughs> well, we can walk shot right along the way. <laughs> yeah, we just get food delivered. Yes. Oh my gosh, that too. One kind of funny thing I've noticed is the speed limits that the Office complex that said 50 when that's very inaccurate. And right now it's well, it was saying 45. 65. Now it's saying 45. It's saying 65. What's it saying? It says 45 now. Yeah. Well, how probably read the signs. <laughs> yeah. Kyle says I miss Jeep's old four liter inline six. That is true. Well, hey, Jeep's coming back with a for their bigger, bigger trucks and the Ram trucks, so that'll be neat. Nice. Moran says, the driving characteristics of Land Rovers are suited for LA streets, especially Beverly Hills. I always see them parked in front of Dior. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a shame because they are really remarkable off-road vehicles with a lot of neat features, and we will do some off-roading here later on in the live drive, but it's... They get, get used to Beverly Hills, yeah. Probably never get dirty. Man. Yeah. yeah. It's just like Porsches getting bought to be driven in the Beverly Hills as well. Yeah. They really ought to be on a racetrack. Yeah, that's a good point there too. One thing I do often like in Jaguar Land Rover products is the feel of the leather. In this car, it's not quite as supple, but like the seats, it just has a good, just real quality feeling leather to it. Same with the steering wheel. Kind of like what you might get out of a, a nice uh, piece of, um, what do you call it? Apparel. Ah, like a yeah. belt? Yeah. Like a nice belt. This is actually a really nice, neat kind of material. Yeah, I don't know what this is. It's like a rubberized, I don't know, weave yeah. of some sort. It's not a weave because nothing is woven. It's That's pressed. True. Pressed. Okay. Pressed into Press. a form. Call, color me impressed. Ha. And this is very squishy up here. Yeah, this also feels kind of like it'd be kind of rugged. Yeah, it's a neat blend between rugged and, and luxurious. Also, it has a volume knob, so that's important. Nice clips. Yeah. Very cool. Mm hmm The HVAC controls on Land Rover is always interesting because to turn the fan on, you actually pull this. What? And then you can adjust the fan. And then turn your heated or cooled seat on, you push it. And then left for cool, which this car apparently doesn't have and right for heat. Wait, it's got to, because I have a blue butt, a blue. Yeah, but it's not going on at all, see? What, yeah. why? Probably because the person who specced this car didn't pay for it. Yeah, welcome to the cruel world of luxury vehicles where you're teased with fake buttons and switches. But it's right there, like yeah. I see the blue color. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna push it. I see the blue. Yep. Rough. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm so disgusted. This is also kind of interesting. Press that and nothing happens. But what's supposed to happen... Is it supposed to open? Yeah. There it goes. Wow, very slow. Dramatic. And then you can hide, I don't know, things. Drugs. Drugs, yes. What are drugs, Les? What are they? Yeah. Kind of drugs. <laughs> Pittsburgh man, you're coming in clutch. Just uh, uh, deleting all of the spam messages. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Good mod. Yep. All right. Ah, William's asking how the air suspension feels ride-wise. 
Does it offset the large rim size at all? It does a decent amount. I'll have to put this over the rough ride section and think to talk about that. But yeah, the air suspension seems to work pretty well. Still not as comfortable as something like an X5, but not bad. And the Pittsburgh man is wondering if you'd pick this or the Jeep GC Grand Cherokee. Compass? Grand Cherokee. Cherokee. Yep. No, make it Grand Compass. That's an interesting question you asked, Pittsburgh man, because this is really only $5,000 more than that Grand Cherokee we had a few weeks ago, the L. They're both going to be pretty comparably unreliable, but the Jeep's going to cost less to fix. But you're going to get better service from a Land Rover dealer. But Land Rover dealer's not going to be as close either. As close? Yeah. Like, as in, like, they're few and far between? Correct. Yeah, the closest one to us is about 45 minutes away. Half an hour to 45 minutes. Huh. Yeah, which the nearest Jeep dealer is about 10. Uh, I, I like driving the Jeep better. The, the Jeep, really, the chassis felt better for the streets. The air suspension is a, little, is a little bit more comfortable. So I like this. This is impressive, but I think I'd take the Jeep. Hmm. Yeah. I think I would have to agree with you on that. This is probably even more capable off-road, which is saying something because the Jeep's very capable as well, but... Again, I don't do a ton of off-roading. I do mostly daily driving, so I would probably pick the Jeep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd probably pony up for the V8 because that 5.7 is nice. That sounds good. Yeah. Ambient lighting. It has it a little bit, I think, but we're certainly not going to see it today. Yeah, it's very sunny right now. Yep. But we do have the Meridian sound surround sound system, which I will be testing tomorrow. And Joy Finley says hey. Oh, hey, Joy Finley. Glad to have you on. Yeah. Neat. All right, we're caught up. Cool, let's do a little walk around. Let's also check out the engine compartment. If any of you are tuning in, like Joey, a little bit later on here, this is the Land Rover Discovery R Design S with the P360 inline six powertrain. I do like the looks. I think it's handsome. I think they did a good job with it. Take a look under the hood. The Ingenium engine. Wow. Yep. Overall, uh, very inviting for your nearest Land Rover Jaguar technician to dig into and try to fix when it doesn't work. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'll give you this real quick list and I will raise the suspension up so people can watch it. Okay. Raise. Wow, that's very noticeable. So you can do the front and back separately, it looks like. And the wheels actually come in, that's kind of neat. Exhaust clip. What's that? Exhaust clip too. Okay. Pretty high up now, eh? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. No soft limiter on this one, Moran. Goes all the way out to red line. I feel like when we open up the trunk, it's gonna the bottom is just gonna come right to my belly button. Probably. It's amazingly tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. That's this ridiculous. Is, this is my belly button right here. Well, fortunately for you, by pressing this button right here. It lowers itself? Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. Do you have to keep it pressed the whole time? Yes. Well, they don't want you to accidentally be squishing something and be like, ah, I don't know. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Right, let's do a little bit more driving. It kind of needs a, like a steppy thingy. Yeah, when it's raised up? When it's raised up. Ugh. Doc Sonic is asking, why not the 4xE? I like, oh, good point. I do like the 4 I just haven't driven it yet, so I wasn't considering the 4 by e But yeah, you're right. That is probably the powertrain I'd go with. It's just, I, the part of me feels like people should buy V8s while they still exist, because it's only going to be so much longer that we have V8s. Yeah. I think you're right. Outside of, like, luxury sports cars. Yeah. 
Yeah, the gas guzzlers are going to be eradicated soon. Mm -hmm. yep. Yas says, hello, friends. Hey, Yas. Got a whole bunch of crew in here. Good to have you on. Kendo972 is asking if the Jeep feels cheap compared to the Discovery. What's your inclination on that one? I don't think so. That Grand uh, Cherokee? Yeah. I think that felt really good. Yeah. Yeah. The materials are a, a step above this, or a step above in this than they were in the Jeep, but the Jeep felt quite nice as well. There were certain elements that weren't maybe quite as fit and finished as the Jeep, whereas this, everything's very tight, very nice to put together. And I think this is a little bit more inspired design. You can tell a lot of effort really went into, like Alyssa said earlier, fitting the screen into here, making everything a nice cohesive, mm -hmm. uh, mature design. Jeep was a tad bit more chintzy, but also very nice. Moran says the Discoveries are in the new replacement for the G-Wagons. The whole part shortage thing caused G-Wagons to be extremely hard to find. I was doing the winding road day drive of, of this and, and I was thinking it would be kind of funny to get a Dodge Journey and try to do an, like an off-road challenge series with this and compare and see, see how well the Journey does compared to this. Okay. So I was behind a Journey and I was kind of thinking to myself, it's got a lot of similarities in, in, a, in a kind of a Walmart version of this idea <laughs> because it's got the three, the tight third row and it's kind of a similar size and it just could be kind of hilarious to pick up like a salvage title Dodge Journey for a few thousand dollars and put some beefy tires on it, lift up the suspension a little and then go overland with it and see uh, see what could be done. I'm going to grab that. Yes. So yeah, let me know what you think. Maybe we could work on sort of, uh, some sort of package there where we put together that, that video series. That sounds like a fun project. Yeah. 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 Neat. Journey and Discovery. Like two wow. Wow. William says, it seems like one of those cars that doesn't have anything overtly wrong with it, but is just kind of cursed by tough company in its segment. GV80, MDX, X5, GLE, Q7, XC90, Aviator, lots to choose from. Oh yeah, those are all better cars for daily driving. This is probably the best off-roader of all of them. Wow. But the only reason most people will buy this is because it looks cool. Yeah. And because of the Land Rover badge on the front. Yeah. Moran says, why the hell does an inline six need two air boxes? <laughs> more things to go wrong and more things right. to charge the customer for. Right. And the Pittsburgh man said they want to leave the squishing to the inside, not the outside. When we were talking about raising, lowering the suspension and squishing something. I see. Or somebody. Yes. Yeah, you're right. That makes sense. Gager says, this thing looks really comfy. It just gives off that great road trip car vibe. Yeah, there is a little bit of that, but it's not as comfortable as, as a lot of the competitors like uh, Will Long just listed off. Yeah. And you're welcome, Kevin. It is really easy to drive off-road though. One thing I like both and off the car is the steering. It's very light. Mm. And even though it's not the most direct steer feeling it's it's, it's kinda nice. It's super easy. Air suspension doing a pretty good job over all this stuff. I know there's a big bump coming up here. I hit it earlier. Right here. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Did you hit it hard? Earlier, yeah. I didn't know. Oh, <laughs> Oof. Yeah. One thing that this car does have is a wade sensor. So if you're going through deep water, it'll tell you how deep it is and it actually tells you how, how deep you can go before it's, that's too deep. We're not gonna really press the limits of it today, but you can see if I go home to wheel info and over to wade sensing, it shows me I have a max right up there. I can go all the way up to the top of the wheel wells, two feet, 11 inches of water. That's a lot. That is a I'd lot. I'd be like, what up, to your stomach or something? Like mid mid stomach, three feet? Two, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I'm not that short. <laughs> I'd say in my hips. Okay. You can only do it down to six miles per hour, but let's see as we get up to this bigger puddle, if uh, if we get any, any uh, action here.
Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. So you can see it actually, Assessing. it has to be at least four, four inches deep for it to see, but it can see the water there. And of course, no problem for it, even though it's muddy and pretty deep. Traveling right on through. How's our camera deal here? How can we get to camera? Let's go apps, cameras. That's pretty straightforward. Look at that, we've got off-road cameras. Shows us the sides, what the wheels are going into, which is really cool. And the front as well. So if I were coming up to a log, I could kind of go like, all right, I want to go over it just like that. Up. It's almost like driving a video game. That resolution is awesome. It's Look so at good. That. Yeah. This is a good reason to get this over something like a Forerunner because the Forerunner's cameras are horrendous. Look at that mud we're going through up there. You can tell it's... Uh... We're going to get stuck in something that's like two inches deep. <laughs> No, we're not. We've got a discovery. Does this have all-wheel drive? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, big, meaty all-wheel drive. You can hear it. Yeah, we have something caught in our uh, brake caliper or something. <laughs> that is incredibly concerning. It's probably just a, like a rock or something. It sounds awful. It does sound pretty bad. Put it in reverse and see if it comes out. The first time we got a Porsche loaner was a Cayman GT4 RS, and within the first day of us having it, we got a, a little piece of um, uh -huh. like tar rock stuck between the brake ca brake caliper and and in there, and uh, I had to take the wheel off and fish it out. It's tough. I kind of hear it still. Oh yeah, it's definitely still in there. I can feel it in the wheel too. Really? Yeah. We should go out and look for it. Is that something we'd be able to find? Maybe. I'm gonna get... Listen to that, guys. Yeah. All right, let's see here. I'll just park right here. Why not? Okay. Oh, I see construction going on. Look at how muddy that is. Hugely muddy. Holy cow, it's like... The whole wheel is caked up. That's funny. The wheels are so caked. Did you find it? No. I'm gonna drive a little bit faster and see if it if it it's frees itself. itself. Yeah. It's, where do you think it is? I don't know. Somewhere in the brake caliper, maybe. Are you able to go fast? Sounds like a train. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Can you guys hear that? Oh, I hate to think of how it's scraping. It doesn't seem to be changing with my wheel direction. I guess I'll have to go out and inspect here. Good thing we got the air suspension, so a little more extra ground clearance. Gonna come out and Yeah, I wanna see what's going on. This is crazy. Oh, it smells too. Oh, or that could also just be the construction over there. Oh, it actually smells really bad. Yeah, I see the rock. Really? Want to show everyone? Right in there at the bottom of the wheel, compared to that side, nothing in there. I need like a long, hardy stick or something. Let's see. Yeah, I'll let you keep this because the hot spot. Okay, there. yeah. Jeez. Well, <laughs> the last uh, Land Rover that we had, we completely messed it up by going through some off-roading sections. And we just did some minor off-roading sections with this one and also messed it up. Oh, I see it. It's right there. It's so big. Yeah, we'll find out. That's loud construction. Jeez. Jeez Louise. I actually need you to take that so I can actually get in. Uh, Land Rovers, man. 
What are these things doing off road? Bet a Jeep wouldn't have gotten a rock stuck in its wheel. Ah, <laughs> uh, much better. Yeah, that was that was weird. That was that I've was never just... had something lodged in that way. Yeah, that's so strange. What do we got going on in the old comment section? Gagers is asking if you've driven the XC90. That's another three row vehicle that that person adores. Mm -hmm. it looks so amazing. But the powertrain seems meh. No, we, yeah, we, we love the XC90. We took one up north a few years ago. I do like that car a lot. Yeah. Yeah. XC90 is great. You can get the plug-in hybrid powertrain. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the, the inline, or the, just the inline four with the turbo and the supercharger and everything. But realistically, all you need for a powertrain is for it to motivate the car forward smoothly, and it does that. So, yeah, I, I like the XC40. Mm. 60, 90, whatever. History man is uh, dealing with a lot of trolls today. Is he? Yeah. W wielding the ban hammer? I guess so. The, the timeout chair? Ron says, I'm down, uh, but finding parts for the journey would be hard, especially a lift kit for fitting 35s under it. Yeah, we might not be able to get all the way to 35s, but we could just do something stupid like put on just uh, spring stretchers, you know what I mean? stretch the the struts all the way out stock struts just get it as high up as it'll go and then um end it with whatever wheels get under it gator says i miss the old discoveries the lr3 and 4 look so cool even the old original discovery yeah, yeah i agree those are cool <laughs> so he says that yikes that's not a great sound i know <laughs> yeah and Moran says, Land Rovers always make weird noises. It's probably normal. <laughs> a little premature on that one. Doc, Doc Sonic says those tires are not meant for off-roading. Man, I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. Here, quick pause. We're going to go over the rough ride section here. And we'll okay. See how well it does. See, see it does, yeah. So far, it seems pretty good. Yeah, maybe middle. A little firm, but not all. It is cool that uh, they leave the camera on, and now it says it's not recommended about 25, but they leave it on, which I respect. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Big bump. Oh! Handles that pretty well. Mm hmm Andrew B. says, I like these, but it seems like LR, a Land Rover, decontented them for the 21-22 model. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, DMS QWERTY is asking what the sound system, what sound system it has. has the Meridian surround sound system, 14, actually 15 speakers if you count the subwoofer, and we'll be testing it either later today or tomorrow. Okay. Guys is asking if the Land Rover will be reliable or will it break? It'll be. But that's okay. okay. Just don't buy one unless you live close to a dealer. Or care about spending money on it breaking. Yeah. They have a warranty for a few years at least. There you go. And what kind of engine is it? It's an inline six. Yep. I think it's supercharged. I'm blanking right now. I think it's a supercharged inline six. Would I be able to find that here? Yep, it should be in the top left area. In this box? No, right below that. Performance? Yep. Ooh, high country. Three liter, that one. Mm -hmm. MHEV six cylinder gas engine. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say anything about turbo or supercharge. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Here, you double check. Yeah, maybe it doesn't. Hmm. All right, you want to drive? Sure, I'll drive. Okay. Yeah. Keep that out. Do a little walk around and switch. I'm going to actually save my seat position here. Yeah, Three memory seats. Idea. And on the passenger side too, which is neat. And it confirms too that memory settings is saved. And yeah, the passenger side has three levels of saving as well. Yeah, I think that's neat. That is neat. Yep. Equality. Yep. Dirty wheels. Dirty uh, under bits. Yeah, really dirty. 
Mm hmm as it should be. Discovering new trails that we already knew about. <laughs> Some water up in me too. Thirsty. Oh, yeah, these doors do not love to close. It's like they're almost teasing you that you didn't get the soft closed doors every time. Uh, up she goes. Will Beverly Hills Alyssa fit in the discovery? Man. Ooh, I do not like how tall I am. It's a phrase you probably don't say too often. Paddle shift or something. Mm-hmm. How do I lower this? Right side, there's a little knob up and down. Up, down, and out. Left, right, back, forth. It's such a large wheel. Is it? Okay. Uh, DMS QWERTY, it does have an off-road launch control. I don't think it has an on-road launch control. Uh, Pittsburgh Man sticker price is 63, or sorry, $73,000. Without the bells and whistles? No, 73 aspect. Yes, but yeah, yeah. with the bells, or without the bells and whistles, it it's is... Like 62 or yeah. something like that, yeah. Maybe Land Rover could lean in further into the off-roading or tow haul niche to separate it from rivals in the segments. Yeah, I think they could. I don't think it's really going to benefit them very much, though. I think people are going to buy these because they like the way they look. They will like the way they look. Pittsburgh man, Land Rover making it easier to fit all of your side chicks comfortably in the passenger. Yeah, well, you can, you can have three side chicks, or at least three body types. If you're going to have more than three, they have to conform to one but of the your... the problem is, the other three's body types. if they all know about each other, they'll know which one is theirs. But if they don't all know each other, they'll all put their seats in as one. And they'll be like, why is my seat not the same then and then? I think if you're hauling girls around in your Land Rover, they know that they're one, two, or three. You're like, sorry, babe, you're number two. Raph. <laughs> that, for those of you that don't know, Raph is my way of saying rough. And rough just means like an oof. Raph. Yeah, Raph. Joey Finley ended up uh, buying a VR6 Passat he was looking at. Honestly, he's been pretty happy with it. Pretty Very fun. cool. For what it is, and comfortable for long distance, so win-win. Awesome, man. Yeah, it, it's kind of cool to get a, a motor that doesn't really exist anymore like that VR6, so I'm glad you're happy with it. Gagers, I am strangely really liking this car. Not sure why. Very interesting to me. I think I'd take it over the Grand Cherokee. I like the interior design way more. Yeah, I think if... Ooh, that person seems to be very lost. That's all right. I'll wait for them. <laughs> Belt Hill Area Hotels. Bruh. Oof. Yeah. I think if you like the way it looks, I mean, it, it does definitely stand apart. It's kind of unique in that. Some of the other Land Rover models might appeal to you as well. So they have a lot of crossover, no pun intended. Huh. Yeah, it is in fact a supercharged inline six. I thought it was. I was surprised it doesn't list that list on there. List it on there? Yeah. What about in the section that has like all its bells and whistles? Unlikely. Possible, but unlikely. Well, they do things differently than everyone else. Right, because they're British. goes all Hollywood when driving luxury cars with her sunglasses and hair It's on. sunny today! <laughs> it's sunny! That's why. <laughs> I wore my sunglasses other days. It's just, we don't get a lot of sun in Michigan. Yeah, if you were wearing your other jacket instead of this more uh, Michigan-y yeah, one, you'd yeah. look very, uh, very fitting. Yeah. That's funny. Big old panel roofs. I do like the, I do like those. Those yeah. are neat. Yeah. I think this interior could benefit from a little extra color. Like if I there were some brown agree. in here, it would uh, it really set it off. Actually, that's why I was thinking of the Grand Cherokee over this for me personally, because 
that one, at least in the second trim that we had, was a higher one and it had a lot of the nice panels on the inside that mm. really helped make it feel a little bit more, I don't know, homey. Yeah. And this is very black and white. Not even white, just black and chromey. Right. Chromey. We like homies with extra chrome. <laughs> Okay, we should be back. See, this is the, the trade-off we always face. Do we put the windscreen on the GoPro and have it overheat, or do we leave it off and have you guys not be able to hear us in the wind? <laughs> so, we, we can't win. <laughs> We're back for the last few minutes, though. we we'll get Alyssa's last thoughts, catch up on... Uh, should have pulled a Will Smith when you had a chance. Slap it. Surprise the GoPro overheated before the car. <laughs> funny, right. very funny. <laughs> uh, hey, Joshua John. Neat. Well, what are your final thoughts on the car? Having driven it for all of 10 minutes. Right. I do understand what you mean when you were talking earlier about it being a little sluggish, feeling a little sluggish, right? When you kind of press on the gas a little bit, it feels like it takes it a second to kind of go and get going. Um, I do feel that. Not my favorite thing. Um, not terribly confidence inspiring, but the ride is really nice. It rides really smooth. Um, if you do want to be up higher, it's a great vehicle for that. Um, I'm just not crazy about it. I'm just not super crazy about it. I like vehicles that are just a tad bit smaller, a little bit more agile. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I can't imagine it's incredibly fuel efficient. What is it? Like mid 20, low 20s, like low like around 20. Yeah, not not super fuel and premium fuel as well. And yeah, it's fuel. not yeah. exactly a practical car. Right. Yeah, but some people okay. just want that image. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if they can afford that image, then there yeah. you go. That's great. Yep. Not crazy about a lot of the silly little quirky things that are about it. Bees being one of them. But <laughs> yeah, just a little bit my personality. Mm -hmm. It's the others. But well, I'm glad that you're not uh, begging for a Land Rover now. Cause, right. Not at $73,000. I think we would need uh, quite a few live drive donations to get us there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of live drive, no one is in this car even before the gopro died we had like 12 people in the chat i saw 14 at one point really yeah. it's a lot lower than our 20 or 30 that we're usually at mm, that's okay rough i picked this instead of the audi a3 because i thought it'd be more interesting <sighs> yeah yeah, you know. yeah well let's go do uh let's go do one last little walk around here and shut it off yeah oh. dirty boy I'm gonna have to go use the washer and off afterward because wouldn't want to give it dirty. Chris Brower, no, no. Proper getting out of it. Two? Kinda, it looks a little large for you. Yeah, it's, it's a little large for me. Look how crazy dirty the wheel is. I know. That's amazing. Yeah, I picture you more in a Range Rover Velar or something like that. One of those sometimes, see what you think. Okay. Neat. Cool. Well, next week, I have no idea what we have. I, right. I think we have a GV70. We were supposed to have the GV70 this week, and I had flip-flopped with the Audi. But, uh, yeah, I think I think I need to schedule the other car for next week. All so right. I'm not sure what we'll have. Okay, big surprise. Yeah. Stay yeah, tuned, yeah. guys. Unless it's a, it might be the Jaguar I-Pace. That'd, That'd be, cool. be really cool. Yeah, we'll do that if yeah. that's the case. That's a Jaguar EV, right? Yep. That's very cool. Any last-minute chats? All right, let's check it. The Pittsburgh man said the Sienna had like 27 PG. Yeah. yeah, so that was a lot better. No, probably 27 people. Oh! Yeah, in the chat. Yeah, that was a big one. Gager mm -hmm. says, I'm glad you chose this. It was my first time ever seeing this car. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah. Moran says, yesterday I was filming some clips for you guys, but GoPro did the same thing to me, even though the AC was on. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, no, they're not the they're perfect. Tough. Yeah. No. Uh... Sanjib Raman is asking if Daily Motor can make a 22 Toyota Highlander Platinum Hybrid review. Probably. I mean, at least a 21. That's what the Topher has. I could always borrow his. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey says, great to catch you live. See everyone next time. Thanks, yeah, Joey. Thanks, Joey. Paul says, I miss my disco. Yeah. Discovery. Older discoveries are definitely cool. And this one is cool, too, in its own way. Trade it in for a Defender 90. Well, we're getting the Defender 90 in less than a month, or Great. just around a month. Yeah. Says the Defender is super awesome, though. Defender is cool, in a different yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. A little more character to it. 
Oh, Joshua John just came in. Yeah. Man, rough. Oh, he said hello earlier. Okay, yep. got it. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you, Pittsburgh Man, for everyone watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the dono. Thanks for all you members, and thanks for watching. And we will see you on the next one. We're Charlie and Alyssa with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Also, one more shout out to the recovery hook. That's, uh, that's what you're paying for right there.